Hello, this is Mark Summers from Summers Technical Services. We're going to go through a SOLIDWORKS simulation to reinforce the uh, topics we learned in class about uh, finding a state of stress at a particular point on a part that's got various types of loading. And uh, you'll be doing hand calculations like you did on the homework to uh, get those answers for the principal stresses and the von Mises stress and the other stresses that lead up to that. Then you'll do the simulation in SOLIDWORKS, extract the results from the model, and compare those values to the values you calculated. And if those match up, you're going to have pretty high confidence that you got the right answers. So let's take a look at the model here on the screen. And uh, this is the model that's applied to you. Make sure to give it the your student ID file name before you get started. And now let's look at the, uh, this is a revised problem definition for our final project here. So this is similar to the homework we did, but what I've done is I've changed the load direction to be in the uh, X direction like it's shown here. This is the same part, it's just rotated 90 degrees so you can see the side where the stress element is. So before we define the stress element to be on top. It's element K. I've defined something called element A, which is on the edge here. You're going to find the stress state at element A based on two loads. This P load going in this direction and this torque load. It's a concentrated torque that's just applied to the tube itself. So what I'm calling uh, this T it's it's a it's a causing a moment about the x-axis and so I'm going to call that T and then P is causing a rotation a moment here at the back interface where we're calculating the stresses about the z-axis so P is causing a moment about the z-axis and this torque is supplying a moment if you will or a torque about the x-axis x-axis so let's look at the uh, spreadsheet here. These are the entries that you'll be entering. Uh, remember the orange cells are going to change based on your student ID. And uh, you'll have to change these values in the model to match your numbers. Here's the force that's going to be applied, the p-load. And then t is a new entry here from the homework. This t is the torque that I just talked about. It's going to be applied. You'll uh, calculate the C value, uh, moment inertia, and polar moment inertia like you did before. And here are the uh, moments the way I've defined them. So M sub Z is the moment that this P load is causing about the Z around the Z axis. And I'm calling MX the moment that this torque, if you will, is about the X axis. So in our case, this moment about X is equal to the torque which is equal to this value right here that I'm giving you on your unique numbers. So that's where those numbers come from. So let's drag this to the side and get the model ready to uh, do the analysis. So a couple of things uh, to talk about. I've got some views set up. If you uh, do your space bar, I've got a view called ISO new. It gives that first view we just looked at on the PDF file. If you do a space bar and ask for a newer ISO, that gives that other orientation over there. And it's not part of the model, but I added this little representation. This is the stress element here we're looking at. This is element A right there at the uh, wall interface. And you can see that this face here and this face here, that's going to be the X face. I can drag it over here. The X direction you see is red, so you, this vertical wall here, this vertical wall here, that's the X face. And then this face top and bottom here, this is now the Z face. Before it was a Y face, but since I'm looking at the stress element at A that I defined in that PDF file we just saw, we've got X faces and we got Z faces. So instead of ca uh, calculating sigma X and sigma Y, We'll be calculating sigma x and sigma z. And you can see the spreadsheet indicates that over here. 
Here's our sigma x entries like we had before due to the F over A stress, due to the MC over I stress, and you add those together. you got to make sure you get the signs on these correct. Some of them are going to be compression possibly, some of them are going to be tension possibly, and you make sure you add those, subtract those as you need to to get these numbers right. If the total, if the total is positive that means it's tension if it's negative it's compression and you do the same thing here these I've labeled as Sigma Z since we got a different stress element same idea on the uh, normal stresses and then the shear stress will calculate is the shear stress on the X face in the Z direction will calculate the shear stress due to shear forces and here we'll calculate the shear stress due to torque and again, you got to keep track of whether it's in the positive Z direction or negative Z direction. These may be positive or negative, and you got to use those signs when you add them up. And then the last cells here are like they were before. Sigma 1 is principal stress. Sigma 2 is a, is a second. Um, or, uh, sigma 1 is the maximum principal stress. Sigma 2 is the minimum principal stress and tau max is like it was before the maximum shear stress and then we added this von Mises stress uh, the equations are on your equation sheet to calculate that all right so let's get that out of the way and i think i'm ready to start doing my analysis uh, the first thing i need to do is get rid of this annoying uh, floor reflection so if you go to the color ball color wheel display manager right click on scene Turn off floor reflection. You don't have to, but that's what I like to do because it's annoying. So turn those two off. And now let's go back to my ISO new view. All right, now I'm ready to start the analysis. So the first thing I do is uh, go to Tools Equations. And this is where you're going to change your values for A and B and D. So you'll type in your numbers there based on the numbers that came from uh, the spreadsheet for your unique student ID. I'll change those numbers. I'm going to leave those at my numbers. And now once you've set that up, you're ready to just go to uh, start the simulation. If you don't have the simulation tab, you'll go to Tools, Add-ins, and then hit the checkbox on SOLIDWORKS Simulation. Turn those two checkboxes on so the module will load. Okay, so we'll go to the simulation tab. I'll start a new study. It's going to be a static study. And I'll just take all the default uh, choices here and say OK. Next thing we need to do is, I uh, forgot to do it in the model, we need to apply a material. So I want everyone to use AISI 1020 steel. So I'm going back to the model tab. And you'll right click Edit Material. And we'll go to the library from SOLIDWORKS with steel materials. There's AISI 1020 steel, just a st standard carbon steel. Apply, close. And now it's defined in the model. Now I'll go back to the simulation tab. And I will go to apply material. And say, uh, when it pops up here, apply, close. And now I'm going to the uh, fixtures. I'm going to go to fixed geometry, the back side of this face. If it comes around. I want that to be constrained in all three directions. So fixed geometry, OK. I'm going to go get my ISO new view so I can get oriented correctly. All right, now I'm ready for the load. So I'm going to come over here to external loads. I'm going to add a force. I want to force in this on this face right here, and I want it to be pointing, according to that PDF file, I want it to be pointing in the X direction. So I want to select the face to place it on, and I notice that it's trying to put it normal to that face. I don't want to do that. I want to select a direction. I want to define the direction with this blue box here. I want to define it using the right plane. That'll get me oriented. Now I want to choose this one down here. This is the direction. I want it to be normal to that plane and that will be putting it in the X direction. So I'm going to turn that box on. 
and now I'm going to type in my force from my spreadsheet and it looks like my force is 1500 newtons looks like my units are correct 1500 you gotta make sure you pay attention to the units and it looks like it's going in the correct direction based on the picture in the positive x direction so I'll say okay now there's the force now I gotta apply that torque so I go to the same external loads pull down go to torque and it's going to ask me the face I want to put the torque on. I've got this split face here that I created for you. I want it to be on that face. Click on this box. This box is asking me for what to define the direction. I want the direction to be this way. And you can see the torque is being applied in the correct direction. As per the PDF file, it's going, looking into it, it's going in a counterclockwise direction. Now I've got to put in the torque and you notice the torque value I give you is in Newton millimeters in my case a hundred thousand I want to type in a hundred thousand here and that's going to be the wrong number because SolidWorks is looking for Newton meters not Newton millimeters so I need to get rid of three zeros so I'll do that right here so that's the correct entry for the torque and I'll say okay now I've got the material defined, I've got the uh, back face, the fixtures defined, I've got my force and my torque, now i just got to do my meshing and run the analysis. So I'll pull this down, create a mesh, I want to create uh, some good results, so I'm going to crank this all the way over to fine, and say OK, and see how many elements it gives me, see if I like the mesh or not. pretty good it's got several elements across the face there so I think I got plenty of elements so now I'm ready to run this analysis so I would save your file before you do this so in case you something crashes you'll won't have to start completely over so I'm gonna hit run this study and my computer's pretty speedy so I think it's gonna run relatively quickly so should get a pop-up window here in a minute that uh, gives me a status on the analysis and now I'm wondering if I push the button or not. Let me try it again here. Run this study. There we go. Click on more. You can kind of see it in the idea. It's got 283,000 degrees of freedom, 100,000 nodes, about 67,000 elements. And it's going through. And it looks like I got some answers here. So now we need to ask for the stress values that we're looking for on our spreadsheet. So you'll notice when I, I want to turn this deformed result off so it doesn't look like it's all distorted. What I want to do is I made this thing such that this plane right here, this right plane, this represents the end of the this is where I want to calculate the stresses. So that plane right there, the right plane, represents where my stress element is. And it's going to be on this side over here at that plane. So let's go over here, do my space bar again, get my ISO new view going. So what I want to do is I want to create the stress values that I'm looking for. So I need sigma x, I need sigma z, I need tau xz, I need both principal stresses, and I need von Mises stress. Yeah, so let's ask for them. So you go to results, right click, define stress plot, and you'll ask for what you want, normal and x, Make sure to pay attention to the units. You're looking for megapascals. That's what I'm asking for on the spreadsheet. So there's one. I always like to turn off this deform plot. Now I'm going to go get the next one. Right click, define stress plot. I want sigma z, normal stress on the z face. There it is right there. 
There's my megapascals. Okay. Turn off the form plot. As for the next one, define stress plot. Now I want my shear stress, which was tau x face z direction. I'm going to ask for it right there tau x in the z direction. Megapascals. And now I'm going to ask for the principal stresses. Right click. Define stress plot. Sigma 1 and Sigma 2. There's first principal stress. Megapascals. Okay. Do it again. Right click on results. Stress plot. Second principal stress and megapascals. And the last one is the von Mises stress. So we'll be turning off these deformed results. Right click one more time. Define stress plot. And we'll ask for von Mises megapascals. All right. So now we can go back and check these results, and I'll show you on one of them how to do that, and you can do the rest of them on your own. So I'm going to go back to normal stress on the X face. And what I want to do first is I'm going to plot tools. First of all, I want to pre-select this uh, plane we talked about earlier. I want to pre-select the right plane. I want to use plot tools, section clipping, and it's going to cut it at that plane. Now I want the other half of the part. I want to look at the back side, not this front side. So over here I want to click the option that says flip direction. So that's what I want to see. I want to check the stresses on this face right here. So I'm going to say OK. And then I'm going to look straight into this face and I want to probe it to find out what the normal stress on the X face is on this corner at this element uh, A over here in the corner. So I'm going to do a space bar and look at that face right head on. I'm going to zoom in here. I'm going to say plot tools, probe. And I want to zoom in over here on this left side, right there where that element A is. And I'm going to get right there. Boom. That is the value of the normal stress on the X face at element A. And so you can read that number there and I'm going to look at my spreadsheet and it looks like it's very close so I like that. So I'm going to say OK. You're going to go and do that for all the other stresses that were requested. You're going to go in and create oops I didn't want that view. You're going to go in there and create uh, let me get my ISO view back. You're going to go in and create uh, that section clipping for each one of these stress uh, requests you made down here. You're going to zoom in on the face. You're going to probe it right there at that far left edge where element A is and you're going to take note of all those uh, values in the uh, that it probes and check each one of those against what's in your spreadsheet. Make sure you pay attention to the positive and negative values because that's going to make a difference we do your calculations, so if the signs don't match up, maybe you did your calculations wrong and you've got a compressive versus a tension normal stress, or maybe your shear stress is pointing in the other direction. So the signs and the values should match up on all of those. So I think that takes care of the instructions. Uh, these is due at the, the day and time of the uh, final exam, but you'll probably want to turn them in before then. Send me your spreadsheet and send me your SolidWorks part model. You don't have to send me all the files uh, that it creates when you do your analysis. You can just send me the part model. It'll have everything I need as far as a setup. I'll be able to rerun it on my computer and check all your results. So that's it for now. Uh, I look forward to seeing you in class this coming week.